Two months prior to the plane crash that resulted in the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin, Vladimir Putin orchestrated a raid by his associates on the residence of the Wagner chief in Russia. This operation unveiled the vibrant interior decor of his mansion. Property in St. Petersburg owned by Prigozhin was searched on June 24th of this year, following the Wagner chief's unsuccessful mutiny against Russia's defense ministry. During this raid, Putin's squad came across many strange discoveries, including significant stockpiles of assault weapons and ammunition, gold bars, wigs, a taxidermied alligator, and a framed photo allegedly depicting the severed heads of individuals considered enemies by the exiled private military leader. Furthermore, the images captured an extensive indoor swimming pool complete with a bathing area, water slides, and even a jacuzzi. The rooms were illuminated by glass chandeliers. And in another aspect of the residence, the contents of a closet exhibited an assortment of wigs in shades ranging from from gray to light brown. Alleged photos of the Wagner chief wearing these wigs as disguises were linked to Russian telegram channels supported by the state. Two months before the airplane crash that resulted in the demise of mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin, Vladimir Putin's associates conducted a raid on his mansion in St. Petersburg, Russia, which unveiled plenty of strange findings. So, the big shots in Russia have finally confirmed that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head honcho of the Wagner group, is really gone. No more wondering if that slick mercenary leader turned rebel was actually on the plane that went down last Wednesday, wiping out everyone on board. They did some genetic testing on the 10 bodies they found at the crash site and big surprise it matches the list of folks who were supposed to be on the flight. The Russian investigative committee's spokesperson Svetlana Petrenko spilled the beans on that. Before the crash the aviation authority had let slip that Prigozhin and his buddies were among the passengers and crew so that's that. However they still haven't spoken up about what made that fancy business jet nosedive between Moscow and St. Petersburg, Prigozhin's hometown. And that's got people thinking, maybe this crash wasn't just a tragic accident. Some folks are whispering about a possible behind the scenes job orchestrated by the Kremlin. And speaking of Prigozhin, the guy's like a mystery wrapped in an enigma. There's even talk that he might have pulled a Houdini and wasn't even on the plane when it went down. Or maybe he somehow dodged the Grim Reaper at the last moment. Around two months ago, this 62 year old went rebel mode on Russia's military. He led his gang of mercenaries from Ukraine headed straight for Moscow and Putin himself called it treason, swearing to rain down punishment on those involved. Well, back to looking at Prigozhin's residence and what was found there. When the raid went down here in June, officers linked to Putin uncovered substantial stockpiles of assault weapons and ammunition, gold bars, a taxidermied alligator, and a framed picture that purportedly depicts the decapitated heads of people considered to be adversaries of the exiled private military military figurehead. Now, if that's true, that is scary. But state media didn't hold back dropping images that seemed to show Prigozhin sporting a lineup of comical disguises. It said he rocked these getups while doing Putin's bidding and sending in the Wagner troops to stir things up in Africa and the Middle East. One disguise showed him as an employee of the Ministry of Defense in Sudan, while in another, he's disguised as an assistant diplomat from Abu Dhabi. Others showed him posing as military figures from Libya and Syria. The mercenary leader is seen making odd faces in several selfies that appeared on pro-Kremlin telegram channels. While the Wagner Group officially operates as a private company, several individuals who helped to found it are tied to the GRU. Poor quality of some disguises led to speculation on some telegram channels that they may have been doctored in an attempt to further discredit the Wagner chief. But Prigozhin supporters declared the leaking of the images may flout Russia's strict national security laws if they were in fact real disguises he used while abroad. Prigozhin has always been on the radar as a top target for the Russian authorities. After his whole uprising went belly up and he got shipped off to Belarus, it was pretty clear he was in hot water. It's said that he actually was on that plane that ended up in a nose dive in a field north of Moscow, which happened just two months after this epic fail of a coup attempt against Putin's regime. So they snapped a pic of a giant sledgehammer in his house with a caption for use in important negotiations, chilling next to a pool table in his fancy mansion. There was just so much crazy stuff when they raided his home. They also hit the jackpot when they seized a bunch of boxes filled with stacks of Russian banknotes worth a whopping 86 million pounds. 
or 10 billion rubles during the raid on his estate. And Prigozhin's estate, by the way, includes his very own office building. Mr. Prigozhin has previously said that Wagner only dealt in cash, with Putin recently admitting that the group was financed by the state. With the Russian president claiming Wagner had received more than 86 billion rubles between May 2022 and May 2023 for wages and additional items that had come out of the defense ministry and state budgets. For years prior to Mr. Putin's speech late last month, the Kremlin had denied any links to Wagner. Well, in Prigozhin's home, multiple passports under different names were also found. Now, here's a twist. The gossip mill says the cash and gear have since found their way back to the office in the Wagner Center. And if that wasn't enough, they caught some glimpses of this private military bigwig swanky belonging, putting a Russian military uniform decked out with 20-something medals. Oh, and let's not forget the stuffed alligator casual chilling on a table. Who needs boring old decorations, right? When the officers went to work, they were packing some serious heat armed with assault rifles. These folks combed through his crib and office like it was a spy movie. But the photos didn't stop there. The peek into Prigozhin's luxury lifestyle was crazy. He had his very own swimming pool inside the house, a helipad for those quick getaways, a sauna for some relaxing evenings, a fully equipped gym to stay buff, and even a medical office because people that wealthy don't need to waste time at a public clinic. That swimming pool area inside was complete with slides, a bathing area, and even a jacuzzi, while most rooms were illuminated with glass chandeliers. We can also see a luxury living area or great room in the mansion with a massive cinema-style TV, chandeliers, black and white checkered floors, as well as soaring ceilings. The house also appeared to have its own private prayer room full of religious imagery. All in all, Evgeny Prigozhin's life sure had its fair share of drama and extravagance, from the laughable disguises to the stacks of cash and the stuffed alligator. His story reads like something straight out of a blockbuster flick. For today though, that's gonna wrap up this house tour, but before we go, answer this question for me. If someone raided your home, what is the most peculiar thing that they might find? Let me know down in the comments if you have any stuffed alligators at your place, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and if you want to watch some more videos then stay tuned because next up we're going to look into the homes of Putin. Bye! From the tiny apartment he used to live in during the 1990s to Romanov palaces, the leader of the largest country on earth and possibly the most hated as well, Vladimir Putin, has had quite a few properties to stay at. Perhaps the most controversial of these is his alleged $1 billion palace in Galenjik. A while back, Putin's arch nemesis and his team, the FBK, had released a video exposing what was known about his palace, also known as the most secret and well-guarded place in Russia. Now, in the wake of the war going on, we have even more details and photos of where the enemy sleeps. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Vladimir Putin is a politician, former intelligence officer, and the president of Russia since 2012, formerly in office from 1999 until 2008 as well. And if he wasn't already, now he just might be the most despised leader across the globe. The ground war he has started with Russia's neighbor the Ukraine is a tragedy to say the least and seems like another way which he's abusing his power. However, another thing about Putin is that as long as he's been in the public eye, he's also a closed book, which he extends to his top secret living quarters as well. Which is why this rare look at his Russian palace should be interesting to say the least. Hey guys, it's Kara and today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time about the ever hated Vladimir Putin and his palace. Before I get into it, I'll give special thanks to Alex Navalny and his team for the footage. Be sure to like, subscribe, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. While Putin has many luxury properties to stay at, this one palace seems to be the most interesting as it's the most secretive and well-guarded facility in all of Russia. The residence at Cape Idokopas, as some may call it, has quite a few names like Putin's Palace, Putin's Country Palace, etc. It's a large Italian villa-style complex located on the Black Sea coast, near the village of Praskokivka in Russia. 
Many have claimed this palace was built for the personal use of President Putin, even though this was dismissed by his spokesman in 2010. Construction began during Putin's first presidency and detailed claims about the property said they were improperly using state resources. Those who were aware of what was going on wanted to investigate the corruption, and high quality photos of the palace and grounds were released by WikiLeaks, which also showed the fancy interiors. The Russian government had consistently dismissed Putin's connections to the property, but over the years, documents and information have been leaked. The uncoverings about the palace itself are from Alex Navalny and his team, the FBK, and it's the size of a village or a kingdom, maybe even bigger. It has secure fences its own port, security, a church, its own permit system, a no-fly zone, and even its own border checkpoints. This video claims that it costs a whopping $1.35 billion to construct. There's also a huge greenhouse on the grounds, which has trees and plants constantly monitored by about 40 gardeners on site. We can then see a large church on the property, a giant 80 meter bridge, and a couple of helipads. He even has a hockey rink and underground hockey complex. And we're just getting started. An important contractor who was involved in the construction of Putin's palace shared many details because the over the top nature and spending on the place, well, it enraged him. Well now, even more photos have been revealed. Let's take a look. We can see a courtyard, fountain, balconies, and an eagle at the front. Front entrance. Moving inside, the details of Putin's quarters are a luxury and over the top Louis XIV style with gold and marble galore. We have what's called the reading room, and now we can see that here there's a large white stone fireplace, vaulted and painted ceilings while everything is gilded. Then there's Putin's master bedroom, which isn't a simple room, but more like an infrastructure. Located on the upper level, his private retreat is made up of multiple rooms, like a formal living room, the actual bedroom with his bed, another private living room, a bathroom, and a giant wardrobe. There are also golden eagles everywhere, which Putin made sure of, in fact, over every door. His bed is a luxurious and large canopy bed, which they did predict in the last video quite well. His private bathroom is quite the affair as well, with a large jacuzzi tub flanked by marble columns, surrounded by luxurious armchairs too. If Putin doesn't want to soak in the tub, he can make his way to his indoor pool. This outrageous space has female statues built into the soaring ceilings, more stucco details, and plenty of columns too. Then there is his very own theater, which is all decked out in wood. It has a two-story auditorium featuring its own balconies and boxes. I mean, if that isn't enough, Putin even has his own strip club or hookah lounge. This room has no windows and one might expect, and there's a pole, sofas, pillows on the stage, which is a little bit disorganized. On the other wing of the palace, there's another lavish bedroom with its own living room and a secret restroom. The room also has an amazing view of the sea, as well as extremely expensive furniture like a bed which cost about $17,000. Either way, this impressive room which is fairly hidden must belong to someone very important to Putin. The endless amenities in the palace also show some restaurant complex. Reportedly, on the second level of the restaurant complex, there is a 50 meter karaoke hookah lounge where there is also a stage. Nearby, you'll find spaces like a dressing room, so it seems that this is where invited performers can prepare to impress Putin. Also in this area of the palace, there's a large billiards and cigar room, an eight-person bar, and then even more interesting, a huge Italian restaurant area. However, we do know Putin loves Italy as the entire residence was designed by an Italian architect and is furnished with only the best and most expensive Italian pieces. And if he's not in the mood for Italian, elsewhere there's even a Chinese restaurant. More specifically, the president's own teppanyaki restaurant. Well, floor plans go on for days, and that's not even half of what's available at Putin's castle. Other features include a beauty salon, a large spa with plunge tubs, a home gym, a music lounge, and much more. Putin even has a personal casino complete with card tables and a roulette wheel, and in the attached games room, a dance machine area, as well as slot machines to film the surroundings. While Putin's palace is not only that massive building and the impressive underground hockey complex, there's almost 20,000 acres, huge vineyards, and a neighboring chateau as well. 
The grounds boasts dozens of outbuildings with room for staff as well as structures for meat and fish workshops, a bakery, a man-made pond, and more. Additionally, the property comes with a separate winery in another village called Krinitsa. After seeing this new update thanks to the FBK, we can confirm a lot of the facts and interiors about Vladimir Putin's palace. And my, it's just as gaudy as we expect. This extreme structure has every amenity you can think of and then some, from a teppanyaki restaurant to a strip club and a personal casino. Just when you think it's done, there's an indoor swimming pool and golden eagles adorning every corner of every room. I wonder how many golden eagles are in Putin's palace altogether. Do any of you know? If so, sound off in the comments. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!